Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. To tip or not, Sandy Williams has a special report on mandatory service charge. Calls for the retention of Christian rituals to stem the wave of violence in schools. And later in sports, Jamaican all-rounder leaves Jamaica Tallowers. I'm Giovanni Dennis and here are the details. Up first, a debate this afternoon about whether customers should be forced to pay tips when they dine at places like restaurants. This comes as some customers raise concerns about the imposition of a mandatory service charge at some establishments. Our reporter Sandy Williams has been digging into the issue and now has part one of a two-part special report. Tipping has been the norm in many restaurants overseas and it's a practice that is being adopted into the Jamaican culture. Tip or gratuity is a sum of money voluntarily given to certain service workers such as waiters or waitresses for the service they have provided. However, some local restaurants have included a mandatory service charge, which many believe is the same as a tip in their bills. This has sparked concerns. More and more of us as, as, as Jamaican working class Jamaicans are going out and dining out. And, you know, we, we, we have to be very frugal with our dollar. And as a, as a, as a result of that, when, when a 15% when a is automatically added, in many cases people haven't calculated that in. Um, but I always say that the customer is king, and if you feel that you haven't received that level or quality of service, then definitely you don't, you shouldn't have to automatically give uh, that 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 gratuity or that tip. A lot of time, these servers they don't do anything to warrant it, and sometimes they that really work don't really get what they deserve. So I don't, I'm not for it. I could understand if I was in a large group then you know you can do it but just to automatically one person come to eat or two person and you put on 10 15 20 percent no i work very hard for my money and i should decide if i give a tip or not i think the, the concept of the tip is wrong because um originally it's because companies didn't like to pay their staff, so the whole tip concept was to make up for the lack of pay. So I think you just pay, pay employees better, they won't need a tip, but if you as a customer feel that they did great service, nothing's wrong with giving a tip. No, I don't think they should force customers to pay tips, but I believe tipping is a very important part of the whole operations of a, of a restaurant or any service operation for that reason. I think what it essentially does when staff members get tipped, it helps to you know, help strengthen, help to motivate them to work much harder and offer better service. But it can't be something that the restaurant insists that the, that the people do. One restaurant manager who did not wish to speak on camera explains that service charge and tipping are different. He says while tipping goes directly to waiters and bartenders, service charge goes to chefs and other workers in the kitchen. President of the Culinary Federation of Jamaica, Dennis McIntosh, has been a chef for more than three decades. He says restaurants should focus on providing quality service, which he believes will eventually attract gratuity for workers. So the important thing for us in the destination is to really focus on quality service delivery, training and development of our young people, and also put ourselves in a position where we're operating at a, at a global standard. Sandy Williams, TVJ. So the news now with students back in the physical classroom following almost two years of virtual learning. A suggestion this afternoon from at least one church leader to address violence in schools. Several schools across the island have been marred with what is being described as an exaggerated number of antisocial behavior over a short period. It also recently surfaced that more and more students have been turning to gatherings for protection. Bishop of the Holiness Christian Church in Jamaica, Reverend Dr. Alvin Bailey, is now calling for the retention of devotions and other Christian rituals to stem the wave of what he called satanic practices within the nation's schools. Motion of habits, obedience, reverence, discipline, self-respect, and all that tends towards to Christian mildness. I always borrow from them, and that is exactly what Christianity and devotions and the advancement of Christ's kingdom 
in schools do to the ethos and to the character and to the values and to the attitudes of, of, of people in the organization that is targeted by devotions that we are insisting should maybe stay in the school. But there's also the matter of shaping character, where persons are, 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 are influenced by the Christian way of life. Now, he was speaking this morning on the Morning Agenda on Power 106. In the meantime, the recent stabbing death at the William Nib High School has again raised concern about the level of parenting skills among Jamaicans. Chief Executive Officer at the National Parenting Support Commission, Keisha Carr, says the commission is concerned about ineffective parenting. All these practices would be violent practices that parents meet out to children at home. What happens when children learn to resolve conflicts in aggressive ways? They are learning that this is what they are to do when they have their own altercations in schools. So we know there is a direct correlation between those parenting practices that are aggressive and those that, par those that children perpetuate in schools. The Commission says it will be training some 97,000 parents this year in effective parenting. We want to ensure that the skill sets of parents improve and that the practices that they continue to, to do that remain harmful or contravene what we believe is in the best interest of children, that those practices change. She's urging parents to partner with schools and access the services. In noting that aggression is at an all-time high in Jamaica, Ms. Carr says it will take a collaborative effort to find solutions. To other news now, head of the Kingston West Police, Senior Superintendent Michael Phipps, says no permission will be granted for the holding of entertainment events in crime hotspots in the division. The Kingston West Police have been grappling with a rise in gang violence. SSP Phipps has warned that event organizers who attempt to bypass the police and hold events in areas beset by violence will be prosecuted. The Kingston Western Division will be treating with all the applications for permit to host events. However, we'll be doing our security assessment in the particular areas and we will not be granting any permits in any community that is currently embroiled in gang feuds. And in the same breath, we will try to limit the amount of events in order to allow for proper security and monitoring by our police within the division. So that's how we intend to treat with the permits application that will come in to us. Four men suspected to be involved in Pradial Larsney are now in police custody in St. Elizabeth. It's understood that around four Monday morning, the police went on an operation in Parity, St. Elizabeth, where a group of men were spotted acting suspiciously. The police made attempts to check the men. However, they fled. Four of them were later held two from a Manchester address and two from St. Elizabeth. A grey Toyota fielder was also seized. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We'll have much more when you return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. A man was fatally shot by the police hours after he allegedly killed a woman in an auto bay St. Mary yesterday evening. The dead man has been identified as 45-year-old Cedric Palmer, a farmer of Cricket River. Palmer is believed to be the alleged killer of 44-year-old Carla Carsing, also of a Cricket River address. It's reported that Miss Carsing was at her shop about 7.30 Sunday night when a man approached her and ordered a cigarette. The man later pulled a handgun and shot her in the head. Palmer was accosted by the police sometime after two this morning in another community. He was shot and killed. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing. 
The Jamaica Teachers Association says it has reached an agreement with the Ministry of Education over the non-payment of retroactive salaries to hundreds of teachers. This was disclosed by JTA President Winston Smith, who met with the Ministry of Education on Wednesday. He said a forensic audit revealed that while all teachers are now in receipt of increased salaries and increments, 700 of them have not yet received their back pay. He said the money will be paid in this month's pay package. The JTA president says the education ministry has agreed to make arrangements for teachers to receive their refunds from the National Housing Trust, NHT, in May. And it's now time for the Business Minute with Cody and Barry. The Office of Utilities Regulation, OUR, is warning JPS customers to brace for more hikes in their electricity bills. However, it says the increase in renewables to 12% and the fixed price liquefied natural gas at 62% may provide a significant buffer against such shocks. The warning from the OUR comes ahead of plans by the regulatory agency to conduct a power sector study this fiscal year. In business inter Internationally, Elon Musk has taken a 9.2% stake in Twitter. The news sent Twitter shares soaring about 25% in pre-market trading. The stake is worth 2.89 billion US dollars based on Twitter's closing price on Friday. The stake makes him one of the largest shareholders in the company and is more than four times the 2.25% holding of Twitter founder Jack Dorsey. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barry. Time now for the top regional and international stories with Sandy Williams. In regional news, the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard has launched a search operation for five fishermen who have been missing since their vessels sank offshore the Twin Island Republic on Saturday. According to the Coast Guard, shortly before 4 p.m., a call was made which said that the St. Vincent and the Grenadines flagged vessel, the MV Fairchance, had hit rough seas and sank after its cargo shifted. Two men survived and were picked up by a vessel from the Coast Guard five miles north of Manos Island. The vessel was carrying a shipment of steel products that was loaded in Port of Spain. Reports out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines said that the boat's captain, Dexter Chance, is among the missing. On the international scene, Shanghai will test all 25 million residents starting Monday as COVID-19 infection cases continue to rise. China reported 13,137 new locally transmitted cases on Sunday, more than 9,000 of which are in Shanghai. The city conducted a citywide antigen test on Sunday, which would give authorities a general estimation of how many people were infected in Shanghai. More than 10,000 medical workers from 15 provinces in China have been dispatched to Shanghai for medical aid, including more than 6,000 people who arrived on Sunday. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And we now head to a quick break. When we come back, Simon Preston will have the Midday Sports. Welcome back. It's now time for Midday Sports. I'm Simon Preston. Hard-hitting all-rounder Andre Russell has left the Jamaica Talawas after spending eight years with the franchise. The 33-year-old will be suiting up for the Trinbega Knight Riders for the 2022 season of the Caribbean Premier League. The four-time winners also have the likes of Karen Pollard, Sunil Narayan, Nicholas Puran, Akil Hussain, Jaden Seals and Etienne Webster ahead of the draft in the summer. The Talawas have retained Rovman Powell, Kenar Lewis, Shamar Brooks and have signed Brandon King and Fabian Allen. To football we go now as Paige Bailey Gale and Marla Sweatman have earned recalls to the Reggae Girls squad ahead of the World Cup qualifiers later this month. 20-year-old mercurial talent Paige Bailey Gale has finally received a Jamaican passport and is in Jamaica's 20-player squad for upcoming games against the Cayman Islands away on April 9 and at home to the Dominican Republic on April 12. The other face that wasn't in the February window of qualifiers that is in the mix now is Marlo Sweatman. 30-year-old striker Tiffany Cameron keeps her place in the squad as she continues her rich vein of form in Hungary with FC Yor. Captain Khadija Bonishaw also keeps her place, fresh off of scoring against West Ham United in the English Women's Super League over the weekend. 
The rest of the squad reads Rebecca Spencer, Sydney Schneider, Yasmin Jameson, Alison Swaby, Chantel Swaby, Sashana Campbell, Vian Sampson, Chinyela Asher, Trudy Carter, Kayla McCoy, Jody Brown, Michaela Days, Shadeda Amalekan, Kiki Van Zanten, Tierney Wiltshire, and Maria Gray. The Reggae Girls are second in Group C on six points with a plus nine goal difference, while the Dominican Republic leads the group also with nine points, but with a plus 13 goal difference. The Reggae Girls will need to finish at the top of the group in order to qualify for the final round of the qualifiers in Mexico in July. Meanwhile, the Reggae Boys will find out their opponents in League A of the CONCACAF Nations League this evening as the draw is slated for six o'clock. Jamaica are in part two for the draw and will face one of USA, Canada, Mexico or Costa Rica from part one in the group stages of the competition. The Reggae Boys will also face one of Martinique, Curaçao, Suriname or Grenada from part three. Jamaica got promoted to League A of the Nations League after topping their group in League B in 2019. And finally this afternoon, seven-time winners Portmore United will be looking to move into the top six of the Jamaica Premier League as they face Tivoli Gardens at Sabina Park later today. Portmore United are seventh in the table on 14 points, while Tivoli are eighth on 12. Kickoff is at 5 o'clock. At 7.30, Dunby Holden will battle their United. And that is it for your midday report. I'm Simon Preston. Giovanni, it's over to you. Uh, the Trinobago Knight Riders were already a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> now with Andre Rosley, it seems very hard seeing them lose uh, the CPL. Your thoughts, Simon? Yeah, it's going to be really difficult to really claim that title from them this year. St. Kitts are the defending champions, but with Andre Russell added to the roster, it really, really adds some depth to a really, really formidable unit of world-class players. Pollard and also Nicholas Perron in the mix as well. Yeah, big loss for Jamaica there. Indeed. Well, that's it for the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.